Good morning. morning. Greetings and peace in the name of Jesus, who is the head of his church. When I was in college, I got a job in housekeeping, and uh, as I rose through the ranks, uh, my boss handed me a beeper and said, now listen, when I'm gone in the evenings and weekends, you're sort of like in charge, and every time your beeper chart, uh, you get contacted with your beeper to do something for five, ten minutes, you still get an hour's worth of pay. I said, that's pretty cool. So a couple times I had to do something for two minutes, still got an hour of pay. That worked out well for me. I guess sort of hazardous pay. When I was in college, and in my younger days, I used to officiate in umpire games. Did you ever do that? It was pretty good, sometimes $50 an hour. Now, you don't get paid $50 an hour simply to officiate balls and strikes and outs and who's following who and free throws. You get paid $50 an hour because of the guff you take from parents and fans and players, right? Can you relate to that? I don't know if you ever umpired. So I want to ask you, what, what, is the, what is the most hazardous job you ever had? What's the most hazardous job you ever had? Or you couldn't pay me to do that. Ever have a job like that? Like the picture there, I don't like heights, so I don't care how much you pay me, I'm not going to do that. Uh, I just don't like heights. That's too frightening for me. So what are some jobs that you would refuse to do even if you got paid handsomely? Being a youth director, okay? Welcome, Cassidy, all right? Okay. Couldn't pay me to do that. All right, some jobs you just wouldn't do. I don't know, I just think I'd have a really hard time with needles and blood. That'd be really difficult. But I went to the zoo with my son yesterday, and I really don't care to clean up after elephants either. No offense, okay? There's some jobs you just can't pay me to do. Well, according to Kiplinger and Cron.com, these are the most hazardous jobs in which you get uh, paid. You get compensated or hazardous pay. Number one's what? Say it. Yeah, and by the way, your plane goes bad. usually doesn't turn out well for you, Okay. Uh, what, about four pilots die in the United States each year. Uh, next most hazardous job is what? Now, we've all seen Deadliest Catch on TV. Um, I was in Alaska a couple years ago, and a couple times some uh, boats that go out for salmon or trout, they just end up missing. Nobody knows what happened to them. And by the way, if you're not in really good shape, you can't throw fish around, and you get hurt easily. So being fishermen, but they get paid handsomely. There's people who come up to Alaska and just fish for the season, and that pretty much pays their yearly salary. You get paid quite well. Uh, next most has this job is loggers. Okay, self-explanatory? I'm um, very, yeah, okay. I'm um, not talking like you and I use in the chainsaw. Oil well drillers, also very hazardous job, but pays very well. Imagine what it's like to live out there three, four months in a row with no contact with the outside world. The uh, next most hazardous job is transmission towers. Forget that. When I was in high school and college, I used to change light bulbs in the store, okay, climb up a ladder and change it. Hip, that jumped one ahead. Um, and so, uh, but, those guys, but those guys get paid um, quite handsomely for doing that. Uh, just imagine what they'd be like. Go on top of the Willis Tower and change the light bulb. Forget it. They get paid very well. Uh, not for me, though. I know it sounds sort of odd. I gave you a sort of a preview of it. Nurses. Nurses is considered a hazardous position. Uh, a profession that pays well because of all the stress they go through, all the love and care. And imagine what it's like to be a nurse uh, during the coronavirus going on. Um, and especially those who are in the front lines in cities that would hit hard. Um, sometimes nurses share their people who died in the waiting room during the coronavirus. It has to be very hard. That's also a job uh, very hazardous that also pays well. Uh, the other job, um, hazardous pay, get paid well for doing the job, would be truck, would be truck drivers. So truck, this little set, truck drivers, that's right. Number of truck drivers die, die each year. Your truck gets blown off the interstate, truckers. I knew some roofers in my previous congregation. They told me once in a while they ended up in a kitchen or a bathroom or a living room because they fell through the what? So being a roofer can be a very dangerous job as well, but it does compensate quite well. Next most dangerous job is construction foreman. I have a sibling who's construction foreman. All sorts of things fall and happen. And finally, to no surprise, uh, the last the top ten of most uh, dangerous, hazardous jobs uh, are what? Anybody know how many police officers die on duty each year in the United States? 130. And just imagine what we've seen on TV the past uh, month. Um, many people are hesitant to do that. So most hazardous, dangerous jobs in the world that you get hazard pay, all the way from being a pilot, uh, a top ten police officer, or private detectives. We wouldn't consider this to be a hazardous job, a dangerous job, but it does, it does pay. 
um, in a different way. And there's a picture of Jeremiah, uh, the prophet Jeremiah. And what happened to Jeremiah was he prophesied to God's people right before they're going to be taken to Babylon due to their idolatry. And people just didn't want to hear that. And so they silenced him. And they ultimately silenced him. And you can see a picture of it here. They put ropes around him and they put him into a well that was filled with mud. And they slowly had his whole body go into, to, into the mud until he died. And so Jesus recognized being a prophet is a very hazardous job. Now, now the pay comes in heaven. But this is what Jesus said about prophets. A prophet is never welcomed in their own town. And in the same way, they persecuted the prophets who were before you. So Jesus recognized prophets being a very hazardous job as well. Well, how about if I was going to ask you if you'd like to go into this profession? And this is the job description, okay? So imagine this. Wanted individuals. Here's another hazardous job. Would you do this job? Individuals who must be willing to have family members betray you. So if you can do this job, there's going to be people in your family who don't care for you, Okay? If you're going to do this job, you'll be hated by others. People will despise you. You'll be literally um, despised and forsaken by others. Uh, here, here's another thing for the job description. You'll never become equal or greater than your teacher or boss. In other words, there's no opportunity to, what? To climb the ladder of success. Your, your boss is always going to be greater than you. So let me get again. This is what the job entitles. You'll have family members betray you. You'll be despised by some. You can never rise to the ladder of success. And you'll be called grotesque names. Yeah. And finally, very low compensation, and at times you need to raise your own funds. Anybody interested? Okay. Well, where did I get that idea from? So let me go through that. The job hints, brother will betray brother and father his children, and children will rebel, Matthew 10, 21. This is Jesus speaking. All will hate you because of me, Matthew 10, 22. Where's this job coming from? Jesus. A student is not above his teacher nor a servant above his master, Matthew 10, 24. In other words, if it happens to the master, it's going to happen to the student or the servant. So where's this job coming from? If the head of the house will be called Beelzebub, by the way, who's Beelzebub? He's a what? Say it. He's a devil. If I get called the devil, how much more members of my household... And finally, what's the job? Being a disciple. Disciples will be betrayed by their family members, hated by many, called grotesque names, low pay, and it's always been that way, then, now, and always. So, Cassidy, welcome to church work, hey? Woo, all right. Be a disciple of Jesus, that's a job description. Anyone interested? Are there, are there any takers? That's what Jesus says for my disciples. See, this is very contrary to what sometimes some TV preachers and megachurches share with us because a TV preacher will say to us that every day can be a Friday. Now, I really like Fridays. Fridays are great days, you know, because you get the weekend ahead of you and maybe go out for pizza on Friday night or maybe you have a date or you go to a ball game. And Friday's sort of a fun day because the week's wound down and you have the whole weekend to do good things. And a TV preacher will tell you every day will be like a Friday Forget that stuff Jesus said about being despised for others and called all sorts of grotesque names and being hated by some. Because every day will be a Friday. Every day is just going to be wonderful for you. That's what TV preachers say. Or a TV preacher would say, the little train that could sermon series. That if you and I would just do the little train thing, you know, the little train, the little train that could, I think I could, I think I can, I think I can. If you and I just do that, then life will be really good. If you just try really, really, really hard, then life's going to be really good for you. Or the other thing that TV preachers and some mega churches tell us is that, well, if you, here's 10 steps to happiness. If you just buy my book and do these 10 things, then your life will be happy, you'll be successful, and you have a big house, you have a car, and everybody will love you. Funny thing that Jesus never mentioned any of that. But it does get people's ears. People like to hear that. We really don't like to hear that disciples are going to be despised and called names and being harassed and even hated. We don't like that. But that's the truth. It's a hazardous job. It's a difficult job to be a disciple of Jesus. People will not like the stances that are taken on sexual morality or that Jesus is the only Messiah of the world or that God has a plan for us or that we are even to be considered sinners. That is not popular at all. But there is hazardous pay. There's wonderful benefits. A hazardous job with wonderful benefits? Well, like what? Well, Jesus says, stand firm to the end and be saved. 
Stand firm to the end and be saved. Some people can have faith for a day. Some people can have faith for a month. I can have faith until my kids get confirmed and I sort of forget about it. But have faith until my last day and be saved. That's what Stephen did. Stephen was the first Christian martyr. He had faith to the end. He refused to not acknowledge Jesus. And before he died, he said, Lord, remember my spirit. Lord, remember me. Into your hands I commend my spirit. That's a blessing we have as believers. Stand firm to the end and be saved. Well, what else other blessings do we have? Well, let me ask you. What's the most quoted command from the Bible? What is the command that God repeats the most in the Bible? Any guesses? Anyone? John, I, yeah, John 3, 16, for God so loved the world. That's a very wonderful promise. The most quoted command in the Bible it happens 365 times. What God commands us to do the most in the Bible, it's even three times in our gospel lesson a day is what? Go ahead and read it for me. Say it. Don't be afraid. That's the most repeated command God gives us in the Bible. Don't be afraid. You don't need to be afraid. But people despise us and we're persecuted and Jeremiah was killed and so was Stephen. Don't be afraid. I got you. I have you. I have you in eternity. Don't be afraid. That's what Jesus told the disciples when on the boat that's rocking and rolling in a storm. You men of little faith, why are you afraid? I'm here with you. I'm not going to let the boat sink. Is that what you think? Do not be afraid. It's the most popular and quoted command in the Bible. Don't be afraid. Have no fear. Have no fear. God never, oops, God never promised a smooth flight, but only what? Successful landing. People will despise you. Family members will betray you. You'll be hated. You'll be called grotesque names. You'll be harassed and persecuted if you are a disciple of Jesus. I never promised you a smooth flight. I only promised you a what? A safe landing in heaven. You will be persecuted because of me. He promises a successful landing. Take it from a guy who doesn't like to fly, okay? I really don't. Okay? Um, fear God for he's the only one that can destroy body and soul in hell. Don't fear anyone else. Fear God. God is the only one who can send someone into eternal damnation. Only God the Father can. God is the only person, God the Father is the only person who has power over heaven or hell. Nobody else does. Fear only God. Now when I say fear, I'm not talking about, like, uh, you know, I'm not talking about the, the scarecrow and the tin man and Dorothy and the cowardly lion in front of the wizard. That, that's not the type of fear. The type of fear, this is all in respect. Fear God. He's the only one that can send you to hell. Don't fear anyone else. This is what St. Paul comforts us with. Okay? Count these with me. For in Christ we are more than conquerors, for I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, let's continue, nor present nor the future, nor powers, height, depth, anything else in all creation can separate us from God's love in Christ. As a believer, nothing can take us out of God's hands. How many? Say it. Ten. Ten times God said, and the world was made very good, and God gave us how many commandments were given to Moses? How many commandments? Say it. Ten. And there are ten beatitudes that were blessed by God, and there's ten maidens who waited for Christ to come back to be their bridegroom. Ten is a very familiar number in the Bible, and ten times God tells us again, ten, don't fear. No one can harm you at all. I have power over heaven or hell. So our hazardous pay at being a disciple is God says, I got gotcha. you. Have no fear, little flock. I am with you. I care for you. I love you. The will of the Father is to love dearly. So what's today? What do we celebrate today? It's what? Father's Day. Some people celebrate as their fathers are in heaven. And sometimes you might not have fond memories of our earthly fathers, but our heavenly father loves us dearly. And so remember, at times, the love our earthly father has, and it reminds us of the fatherly, our, our heavenly father's love for us, that he cares for us. Now, I heard it before. For God so loved the what? World. And we pray our what? Father. And John says this, what love the Father has lavished upon us that we should be called the children of God and the Father loves us dearly so much that he knows when a sparrow that's worth only half a penny falls. Now, I don't care about a half a penny. I mean, do you pick up pennies off the ground? I don't care. 
But God knows when a sparrow that's only worth a half a penny falls, and if he knows that much, how much does he care for you? Matter of fact, the Bible says he knows the number of our what? Here's in the head. For some of us, it's becoming less, it's becoming greater. Never mind, I'm not going to go there, okay? But he knows that. He knows that. I like him to say this. God the Father in heaven has this gigantic refrigerator, and he has all our pictures on it, okay? If God carries around a wall, he says, hold on right there. Let me show you all my kids, okay? And these are all my kids I love. The love of the Father. So the hazardous pay we have is that the Father loves us dearly. What love we are worth much to him. And finally, be faithful to the point of death, and I'll give you what? The crown of life, hazard pay. Be faithful to the point of death. And we get a crown in heaven. So being a disciple, that's a very hazardous job. Family members betray you. People hate you. You'll be called names. The world would despise you. The pay's not that great, but guess what? There's wonderful hazardous pay and great benefits. Don't be afraid. Heaven is yours. I'm with you now. I'm with you always. What a wonderful thought. Being a disciple, what a blessing that is. So how about this for a closing thought? If anyone comes after me, let him deny himself, pick up his cross, and follow me. And all God's people say...